We're really looking forward to coming back to the Netherlands. Uh, we didn't have long there in 2012, so this time we've got a full month of shows, so it's going to be really great. We get to see parts of parts of that country that uh, we didn't have time to last time, so it's going to be amazing. Tubular Bells has meant a lot to me over the course of my life. It's become a sort of recurring soundtrack. Um, my parents used to play it a lot when I was a kid and I got interested in it again when I started learning guitar as a teenager. In probably the mid-90s I was collecting a lot of records and I was kind of obsessed with music from the 60s and 70s. Um, and so this was just one of the many that I was listening to at the time. Then when Aidan and I started doing this project together, um, I kind of got a new affection for it. Um, we just happen to be big fans of that era of British music, the instrumental folk rock and prog rock stuff, and Sheba the Bells is just one of the special ones that stands out because it's got a, a subtlety to it and yeah, a magic that sets it apart from all the rest. Aidan and I have been playing together for years and years. We met each other when we were uh, in school. Uh, we, weren't, we didn't go to the same school, but we lived nearby. We had a lot of common friends and uh, and we became closer after high school, ended up moving in together when we were 19 years old and we have played in lots of bands together, uh, we recorded each other's solo projects and helped each other out with songs across the years so uh, we've had a tight working relationship. Um, and what brought this project about is that Danny and I, we hadn't done anything together for years and we just thought it would be a nice way to break the ice again. So we decided that, you know, we'd make a point of getting together and seeing what would happen. And this, this is it. We didn't specifically choose this record. Um, it just kind of came about by accident. You know, one night we were listening um, to records and having a bit of a jam with a few instruments and Tube of the Bells just happened to be one of the records that we put on and we tried to play along with it. Pretty soon we became obsessed with the idea and we took it further than we ever thought we would. <laughs> now we're touring it around the world so uh, this is the next step of our friendship I suppose. You know we completely pulled the whole album apart in and then put it back together again and come to realise just how complex some of the parts are in there, especially considering how young Mike Oldfield was when he wrote the piece. And he was 17 or 18 or something like that. There are so many parts in this piece which I'm really fond of. Um, and I think to perform, what I enjoy the most is when we get to Piltdown Man on the drums and Aiden's growling all the parts. It's more of a release <laughs> because the show is so stressful to get through. You push through and you push through and you push through and you get to that point where you can just let loose for a little bit and not have to worry about playing 50 instruments at once. Well, I don't have to anyway at that point. Aiden still does. It's difficult to pick a favourite part of Jubilee Bells because there's so much going on, but I think if I had to, um, uh, the last six minutes or so uh, of part two uh, I think is just one of the most beautiful things I'd ever heard and it still gives me chills every time I hear it. It's, 
it, it feels like the journey's end and I look forward to playing that every night. sounding exactly the same as the record um, and we've come very very close mind you you know every every time we perform it we think we're we're there we think <laughs> we've got it as close as we can get and then we come back later and we've got more ideas so it just keeps keeps growing I think it's crucial when you're interpreting another composer's work to bring your own sense of creativity and individuality to it. Uh, Danny and I have very individual uh, playing styles as well as composing styles and bringing that to Mike Oldfield's uh, you know, most famous work has been quite interesting. It's obviously Mike Oldfield's music but it feels like our show so much work into, well, there's lots of problem solving to try and put it all together. Who's going to play what lines and how are you going to balance that while you've got to change to the next section, you've got to think ahead to, you know, what instruments are needed there. It's been an incredibly big creative outlet for the both of us. Uh, it's very different from the way Mike Oldfield would play it, uh, yet it's very much, the spirit of the piece is very much intact. Uh, but I think we bring a lot of our own style and personality to the piece. The beauty of this piece of music is it's got this big arc. It's like a film score. It um, goes through different moods and emotions, has its ups and downs, it's it's gentle, it's aggressive, um, all these things and so in one sense we want people to experience that at a musical level. You could close your eyes and just be taken on that, um, on that journey but in another sense um, we like keeping the audience on the edge of their seats because what we're doing on stage could fall apart at any minute. Every night it's different for the audience and for us. Certain things can go wrong, certainly, but also we interpret the music uh, according to the emotions and the atmosphere that's with us on the day. Um, the music isn't completely flexible, but there's room uh, for it to ebb and flow a bit. And, and sometimes that happens. Sometimes we stumble upon some little surprises that we weren't expecting. We try things out. Sometimes we'll try out getting another detail in there, even if it is really risky. A guitar might fall over, something might get unplugged, or we might just miss a beat, and then it's a disaster. So um, there's this element of circus to it as well, physical theatre. So enjoy the music, go on the ride, but at the same time um, also go on the journey with us and see if we make it to the end. It's always mentally challenging. We have to think ahead all the time. Uh, and that never changes every show, no matter how familiar we are with the performance, it's always challenging. Sometimes there's a split second to make an instrument change, and that may go really smoothly one night, and the next night the guitar may fall off its stand, or the keyboard may come unplugged, or cymbals will fly off, and we just have to keep going. There's times when, you know, you're playing um, a keyboard with one hand, you tapping notes on a guitar with your other hand and you're pushing pedals with your feet and hitting percussion and, and there's even moments when you know you might have two seconds between what you're playing on one side of the stage and the next instrument you've got to play is all the way on the other side of the stage. That's the, the trick of it. Uh, if the music stops then we haven't achieved our goal. Uh, I think to this day we have always managed to keep the music going no matter what's gone wrong and some pretty amazing things have gone wrong. Although it's pretty well rehearsed, um, we know it's on a knife edge, you know. We know that the slightest 
um, movement in the wrong way will, will ruin it, the change. And then it's time to improvise and try to get it all back on track. And then, you know, keep pushing, keep pushing. The aim's always, once you play that first note, there's no stopping. You've got to get to the end, no matter what goes wrong. As to the future of the show, we've got uh, some more shows coming up, hopefully at the end of 2014, and we've got plans to go further abroad in 2015, and Danny and I are also wor working on a new show, uh, which we are going to keep secret for the time being, but it's something we're definitely working on, so looking forward to sharing that with people as, uh, as it comes to hand. I think it's really important that people are aware of the history behind the music that they're listening to today. And by doing this show, we just kind of open a little door to a period of time and maybe, just maybe, some of the younger audience members will go and have a listen. But that's what I did when I was a teenager. I completely immersed myself in um, what contemporary musicians at the time were influenced by. And then you, you follow it, you know, it's a kind of a rabbit hole. Once you go down, it keeps going. You go back to the 70s and you realise who they were listening to in the 60s. And then you go back to the 50s, to these blues artists, to these jazz artists. It all comes together to make um, mu what music is today. Yeah.